If you're going to be buying a house in Fort Wayne this summer, stick around because in this video, I'm going to go over everything that you're possibly going to want to know in order to be successful with that. Hey everyone, my name is Dave Brow. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here or if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. That way you get notified each time we make, we make a new um, video. I talk all about what it's like to live in Fort Wayne and specifically about the Fort Wayne real estate market. So let's get right into it guys. Um, First thing is I want to give you a update on the real estate market and kind of what's going on here. So our average sales price right now is 233, which will get you a pretty decent house in, in um, Fort Wayne. We've seen a growth of about 12% in the last 12 months. It's pretty much on par with the rest of the country. Um, I know some areas have been exceeding like 20% growth. So it's, it's crazy, um, it's not sustainable, but I do see that in our future, uh, like a deceleration hopefully of home prices, which is gonna be good for, for everybody. Um, so guys, the Home Price Expectation Survey, which is a uh, report that comes out and they pull like 100 of the top real estate gurus and um, economists and they asked them, where do you see, or where do you think home prices are headed? And this is the result of, of the latest um, poll that they took. And as you can see here, uh, we are gonna see a deceleration of home prices. Nobody actually thinks that home prices are gonna drop or like fall, go negative, but they are going to settle down. And that's great because we, um, we're climbing too quickly. So I think historically home prices rise about two to four percent that's like a healthy range um and i'm showing you this slide because a lot of people ask us and a lot of people have concerns because they remember so vividly 2008 you know the crash that happened and we did see home prices fall in fact they fell like 20 percent almost across the country in fort wayne i believe from 2008 to our low at 2012 I believe our home prices fell about 12 to 14 percent so we would have a, a lot to go you know just to fall in order to to reach that kind of level but this graph right here so shows the six latest uh recessions and as you can see only twice have we had home prices that have fallen so just throwing that out there so you can see um next i want to talk about the inventory in our market so some good news here because it's been quite annoying for home buyers for some time now. There's just not a lot of houses to buy. That's the story all over all over the country. But in Fort Wayne, um, according to our latest data that we have available from the month of April, it's now the first week of June. So we yeah, you know, have to wait several weeks for the reports to come out. But our inventory rose 27% in April this year compared to April last year, and that's significant. So we went from 451 units on the market at the end of April in 2021 compared to 576 this, this year. So I think that's fantastic. I definitely am gonna pay attention to the April report when it comes out and see if it is a trend that is happening. I've spoke to a lot of real estate agents on my team um, a lot of the 13, I should say, and they all, they all kind of have the same feeling. Like it's, it's cooled down a little bit. It's not so, so hot. Of course it is a hot market. It's still extremely strong seller's market, but it's cooled down, um, significantly. At least they feel that way. So, um, the next thing that I want to talk about is, um, is the month supply of inventory. This is, is a measure of how long it would take for the market to buy off all of the available homes if no new homes were put on the market okay so they say a healthy market is six months it takes six months to to buy off all the supply okay but for many many months probably four six 
months in a row, we were at about four, about, I don't know, about half a month's supply of inventory, okay? So it's like two weeks. So in the um, in this year, the um, 2022, we're seeing a uptick in, in inventory. So that's great. So if you're gonna be a home buyer, you know, in a market where the inventory is slowly going up, that is gonna be good for you because that means that there's just simply uh, more to choose from and typically less competition. So I'm gonna watch that as well. Affordability, this is something that is not, not that exciting because affordability is, we're all feeling it. Like the price of everything is going up crazy. That we have out of control inflation, home prices are going up, of course. But um, there is an index to measure home affordability and home prices or homes are becoming less and less affordable. So uh, 2022 compared to 2021, year to date homes are 30% less affordable. And they get this number by taking into consideration the home prices, which have gone up, the mortgage rates, which are going up, and then the cost of living in the area, okay? So there's no doubt about it. It's it's annoying and everybody has to deal with it, but that's just the reality. Uh, conditions are never gonna be perfect, but that's what we're dealing with. So this graph right here, I want to, to show everybody this because it's good, I think, to consider like, what has happened throughout history. Because yes, our affordability is going down, but if you look at this dotted line, that shows you the uh, average, like the historic average levels. And we're just now at that range. We were so lucky for the last several years, actually since like 2008, that you know, home prices were relatively low, cost of living was low, but really interest rates were super low. So. On this graph, the 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 taller the um, the taller the bars, the more affordable it is. Okay, so yes, the homes are becoming less affordable. But if you look at it historically, since at least 1990, we're right on par with with pretty much average. Okay, this is probably going to be coming less and less affordable. But for now, that's that's where we're at. Okay, so guys, next I want to talk about really getting deep into what it takes to be successful as a home buyer in this market. And the, the first thing is just being prepared. They say that luck favors the prepared. It's true. Um, you know, everybody, everybody can agree with that, right? So the number one thing that, that I recommend to anybody if they're buying a house in Fort Wayne or any other market is to have a professional consultation with a real estate agent. That's what they do. So a, re, a real estate agent who knows what they're doing, who takes their job seriously, is gonna want to do this because they know that it's going to save a lot of time for everybody and it's gonna make the process uh, better, like like infinitely better for everybody. So during this meeting, you can do it online, on Zoom, or you can do it in person. The agent is gonna find out uh, like your strategy, what you're looking for, the neighborhoods that you're interested in, the price range that you're interested in. And of course, this is gonna be a time that you can interview the agent as well, get a good feel for this person, Ask this person what they do to get buyers' offers accepted in this market and listen to what they say. I would do some, some searching online, do some Google searches, make sure that this person has good credibility, okay? Um, and it's not gonna take that long. It's gonna set you up for success. You can do this as far as probably a year out from the date that you wanna purchase. It's really never too, too late, or sorry, too soon to do this. And the next thing you guys is you're going to need to determine your down payment because I think a lot of folks get this wrong. They think that they need to have at least 20% down and that's just not true. In fact, the average person is not putting 20% down. Uh, all home buyers are putting on average 13% down. First time home buyers are typically putting 7% down, which is not surprising because they're usually just starting off. They don't have a, a lot of funds. But even repeat buyers who typically have a home to sell, they're still only putting 17% down. So if you are waiting to get in the market simply because you feel like you don't have enough money um, to put down, well, I would seriously consider not waiting because home prices are just going up and interest rates are just going up. So houses are, like we just talked about, becoming less affordable. So I would definitely recommend that you would talk to a lender or a realtor um, about that part, okay? 
So once you determine that, then you're going to need to get pre-approved. And I think a lot of folks, they, they also wait too long doing this because they kind of like, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I know I'm good uh, finding the right house and then I will show, I should have no problem like getting a loan. And that probably is true. You probably will have no problem, except that it does take time. And in a market like, th like this, time is very, very critical. A lot of, a lot of times, th that's so stupid. A lot of times you don't have, you don't, you don't have uh, just room to wait. Okay, I won't say that stupid word again. So um, get yourself prepared and uh, get, get set up with a lender, get that in place, and then just wait for the right house to come on the market. Then you can execute very quickly and decisively, okay? I've seen it over and over again where people who weren't ready missed out on their dream home and then people who were got to have their dream home. So a lot of people I know are concerned about interest rates, rightfully so, because they're going up, which is uh, just you know what we have to deal with here. But this shows us where interest rates are expected to climb. And then it shows us where that compares to 2018. So what's gone on since 2018. So everything in the blue is, is leading up to where we are now. Okay. So we took a, a huge dip in like 2021. And I think a lot of people are, are kind of like thinking like that's going to happen again. We're going to think we're going to have these low interest rates and probably not going to happen. So don't wait for that. Um, they are climbing. They're expected to climb. So everything on in the orange on the right is going to show us the next four quarters. And I would say we're at like, you know, around five right now. We've actually, our interest rates have actually dropped in the last couple of weeks, but they're going to go back up. I, I would say in the next year, they're going to be in the fives, which is not too bad. Like I bought my first house in 2006 as a first, first time buyer, 2006. Yeah. And I think my interest rate was 6%. I, I made it all right. It was, uh, it didn't like stop me. I wasn't even worried about it. I didn't even think about that. But then again, that's what the interest rates were. I didn't really have much to compare it to. So guys, it's very important that you need to decide if you want to go with a, a local or a national lender. And I'm just going to share you my, share my, um, you know, professional thoughts with you. A local lender is, in my mind, always going to be a better option for you. So I would use a local lender if I was going to buy a house in another state. I would get connected with somebody in that market. And here's why. Because they already have local relationships, but most importantly, they have like credibility. So when you're going to be making an offer, and chances are in this market, you're going to be competing with somebody, you want to do everything that you could possibly do to to be competitive, right? So like if you are using a lender, like a national lender, like a Quicken, um, there's dozens of other ones who, who the, you know, might not have the, a good name for themselves here or even a name period, you know, they might have like a, a bad rep, but just no rep reputation, you know, you'll come up short when you're competing side by side with the offer that's the exact same, except they have a, they're using a trusted local lender. And I cannot stress that enough. The listing agent is going to extend that trust and confidence to the seller. So sellers, you guys, you might have an awesome offer and a great price and stuff like that. But believe it or not, not every seller is motivated by the highest price. A lot of sellers, they want to make sure that the house is, the deal is going to close. So they like that certainty. So just keep that in mind. I know national lenders are typically convenient. They do a lot of good marketing. They um, uh, offer tools online that you can you know, get a pre-approval on a Sunday night. And that's really cool because you can get on with your life. But I'm telling you, a lot of times it comes back to, to haunt you. You know, that convenience on a Sunday night, two weeks later after your offer is accepted and there's, there's problems, now they need to verify a bunch of stuff. No matter what, you're going to have to put work into it. I promise you that, okay? You might as well put the work in um, up front and as you're doing this during the, the preparation phase is what we call it. So then if you are living in Fort Wayne or, or not, uh, it's the same thing. You're going to want to know where, where you want to live and you're going to want to get an idea of the neighborhoods. You know, if you live in Fort Wayne, start driving through neighborhoods and going through open houses, just getting a, a feel for it. And if you don't live in Fort Wayne, it's, it's you can do a lot of the same things so you can do 3d tours a lot a lot of listings online have 3d tours you can if you get connected with a good real estate agent they're they're going to 
expect and know that you're probably going to want um, them to preview homes for you. And that's just, that's just part of the process. So you can get set up on a website like ours. It's called IndianaHomeHub.com where you can save searches, you can create an account, you can communicate back and forth with, uh, with the real estate agent or the team. Or if you like Zillow, I've got nothing wrong with Zillow, you know, continue to use Zillow. One thing about Zillow that you, you should know is they, um, yes, while they like do a very good job, they also sell your you as a lead to other agents. So expect that you're gonna get a lot of calls from different real estate agents. If you're okay with that, that's fine. Continue to use that, okay? So next, guys, is phase two, okay? So this is the showings and offer phase, okay? So this is when, you know, within about 30 days of when you know that you wanna have an offer accepted on a property. And this is when you, you gotta really get down to it, okay? So first, it's important that you need to understand your competition, okay? So first time buyers. This is gonna be pretty much anybody in the $200,000 or less price range in Fort Wayne, okay? So these people are motivated to buy their first home. They're typically you know, living at their parents' house or they're renting an apartment and they finally have the savings or this, their, their credit ready so that they can buy the first house. They're really excited about that. This is 34% of all buyers out there. So this is a pretty large segment of, of our market. The average age of these people are, are 33 years old and this number is actually climbing. It used to be like 30 last year. It used to be in the 20s. So I think people are waiting longer and longer because they have to, because they have to save up, okay? So just know that if you're, if you're buying a house in like the $200,000 range, you're probably gonna have several or many offers. These, these houses usually, if they're you know good condition and priced well, you're, you're gonna see competition. There's just no doubt about that, okay? So expect it. Next, you guys are repeat buyers. So these are most most home buyers above two hundred thousand dollars are um, usually have bought a house before and or they have a house to sell. So keep that in mind too. You know you might be competing with other people who are making other great offers like you, but the offer is going to be contingent upon their house selling, which is going to kind of like knock their strength down because of that uncertainty. Um, with the seller because now you have another house that is involved in in their deal. Okay, so surprisingly to me, uh, the number one reason why people are, are buying their second home right now is because they want to be closer to their friends and family. This is according to NAR, the National Association of Realtors. Uh, the next is they just they want a bigger home, and typically, you know, they've they're well established in a job, they can afford a bigger home, they want to live in a better area as well. Okay, so the average age of repeat buyer is. Uh, 56 years old. So um, these are more established people. They have deeper pockets. So they typically have more money to come up with like appraisal gap guarantees and things like that. So really the third segment of our market guys are investors. And mostly these are mom and pop investors. And these are people who own, you know, just a handful of properties. They've been slowly acquiring real estate properties to build their, their nest egg or their net wealth um, throughout their adult lives. And um, these people are typically methodical, so they don't act super, super quickly on decisions. And we also have a lot of out-of-state investors. So uh, we're coming up on people's Google searches and, well, you know, investment radars because we kind of fit their, a great portfolio of a good environment for that. We have relatively affordable homes and we have um, uh, low, uh, sorry, because we have relatively affordable homes and we have good rents. So this is a, it's a good investment for a lot of people. One thing that's really great is that we, as far as I know, we do not have any institutional investors. So these are like the Black Rocks, um, uh, you know, so, well, not Black Rocks. These are companies that Black Rock typically funds like Open Door. They're buying up a lot of real estate across America and they are very, very hard to compete with because they have such deep pockets they can operate on a lot lower margins. So we don't have to worry about that here yet, as far as I know. So that's that's your competition right now, guys. Next is, um, is showings, okay? So whether you live in Fort Wayne or you live in, or you live in Fort Wayne, um, you still have options. If you are here, of course, you know, nothing beats an in-person showing with your real estate agent, especially when a house like just comes on the market. Be prepared when something great comes on the market to, to act quickly because 
If you like it, typically other people are going to like it as well. If you are not living in Fort Wayne, don't worry. You don't have to, you know, fly to Fort Wayne every time you see a great house. In fact, you're probably not going to have that much time. Get it set up with your real estate agent and establish that, hey, you know, when something comes up, I'm going to want you as my real estate agent to go in and in, in preview it for me. A lot of times we do it over Zoom or just like FaceTime and it's pretty effective. A lot of people are buying houses sight unseen. Um, well, I shouldn't say sight unseen. They're, they're not here physically. They, they know it, you know, through what they experienced it online. And then they close on it remotely and then they come and they see it for the first time. So far, I have not had a bad experience with that on our team and um, it's happening a lot. So with technology like Matterport 3Ds, um, you can you can get a good sense about a house just from from um, from the tools that are available for you. Okay. So guys, um, the next thing I want to talk about is off market properties because a lot of people I believe don't realize how many houses are selling that you don't want to see online. So Zillow is not the market. What you see on Zillow is not every house that's that's available. Um, so if you get connected with a, a great a great team or a great agent who has a good you know relationships throughout the market then you can be extended these listings that are coming on the market and i would say maybe like 10 percent of houses maybe are sell this way so you know a seller they they hire a, um, an agent to list it for them and the agent you know has conversations with their buying their their clients and if it works out for the seller you know not all the time does it because sometimes sellers they want to put on the market they want to they want to get you know the maximum sale and then other sellers are like hey you know this works for me it's convenient it's what i thought i was going to get for it and let's go with it so this happens a lot just keep this in mind this is another valuable reason why i highly recommend that you get set up with a, a professional early on and you can establish your, these relationships it literally pays off for you like it literally saves you money and, and finds or allows you to find like you know great houses okay the the next phase um this is final this is this is your the the escrow phase okay this is right before um closing this is right after you get your offer accepted and there's a, a lot of things that that go on um during these typically like 30 days but first is your your due diligence period is what we call it this is when you complete your inspections okay so typically you're going to make your offer contingent upon getting inspections and during this time you can get any number of inspections that that you deem you know necessary um, your general home inspection and radon stuff like that okay in our market it's typically about 15 days that's the period that is on the purchase agreement and if you find any defects that are true defects that you're not comfortable with you can go and you can ask the seller to correct these defects and if they are not willing to then at that point, it, at your discretion, you know you can decide that you can back out. So you're not bound to continue the purchase if there are, are defects. Um, you know, on the flip side, you you have to give the seller an opportunity to to make a decision on whether or not they're going to correct these defects or not. I know in other states, a seller um, isn't even afforded that that privilege. I guess you know, so a buyer can just be like, hey, I, I don't want it anymore during during this time. We, that's not how it's in Indiana. Um, you know, both parties have to kind of like uh, uh, work with each other, okay? So next is the appraisal. You know, this goes on about the same time as, as the inspections um, happen. And this is when, of course, the lending institution sends out a, a professional appraiser to go out and they value the property and they make sure that you're not paying more than what the market value is, okay? So yes, in, in an environment like this where home prices are rising so quickly we do see more appraisal issues but not as bad as many as you might might think um it deals fall apart for all different reasons and i would say because of, of an appraisal issue that can't be resolved i would probably say it's like less than five percent of the time um do do deals fall apart because of that okay um so guys finally you made it to closing um, right before closing, you're going to want to do a, a final walkthrough with your real estate agent, or you're going to have your real estate agent do it for you if you're at work or if you are out of town. It can all be done remotely. You're going to want to make sure that the inspection repairs are satisfactory to you, that the seller has not damaged the home, or if it's vacant, like, you know, weather has not damaged it, 
you know, there's a whole bunch of things that I've seen that has has happened. So that's why it's super, super important to get somebody in there and just put eyes on it as close to closing as possible as in like within like 24 hours would be ideal, okay? You're gonna review the closing statement. This is what you sign at closing. Make sure that everything's okay. Uh, your real estate team, your real estate agent team will also review this for you and you guys will answer any questions. You guys talk about any questions or whatever that you have, they, they will answer those for you. And then you're going to wire your funds. So um, anything below $10,000 can be to closing, can be a purse or a, um, a bank check. But anything exceeding that, which is you know most closings, it needs to be a wire from your bank, okay? And then you're gonna go to closing if you're in town or you can close remotely. So you don't have to come into town to do closing. It can all be done with a um, with a notary, okay? So guys, uh, that's it. I hope this information was, was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions about buying a house this summer, um, please reach out to us. I think it's gonna be a, a fantastic market, especially if the interest rates kind of like stay where, where they are and we get, we've got this more uh, inventory opening. So definitely definitely pay attention to future videos. I will be updating you specifically on, on those things, on the interest rates and the inventory in Fort Wayne.